call the meeting to order. 601. Okay. Bell hasn't rung yet. It's going to ring in about two minutes. <laughs> 603 now. Probably. Oh, well. Uh, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that we need to add? Or yeah. It's Chris Fors, he is our project manager for the VORET grant. He got a little out of sequence with the accounts payable, so he's asking if we can have ask Pam to issue a check to access track. TRAX to purchase uh, for a purchase for $1,412. It is something they want for Forward Fest, and they are 17 three by three mats, and they actually click together to make things, and they're pretty lightweight. I looked at their website today to make things handicap accessible so you could put a wheelchair on it. And um, it's part of the VORET grant, so it's not coming out of the general fund. So he's just, as he's, if he waits for the schedule pay date, um, okay. It won't be here in time. So now he understands. Pam explained the finer points of the schedule to him. So now he's all set moving forward. But I told him I could ask the select board. I explained to him that we don't have the authority to cut checks without getting approval. So that's what we want to add. So you guys okay with just putting that first after public comment? Because there's a bunch of other stuff. It only take us a second. Everybody's good with that. Just sure. Spend so more time explaining. It. We'll, we'll so we'll, yeah. So we'll I just. Know. We'll, we'll just add weird. that as the first item under public comment. Okay. Yeah. And then anything else for the agenda change? Mm -hmm. No. No. No changes. So we had a motion. Yep. So second. Yeah, second. second. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. And did, were we going to go forward with the, the um, appointment at 6? Yes, yep. Gary um, is, just, he said it's hard for him. He's totally deaf in both ears, so he's not going to understand. So it's easier <clears> to be one-on-one. -on -one. So I said, no problem. Um, just send me an email. And um, I said, why don't you send me an email of why you believe the material spread on the road damaged your leaf spring and it's not just a general wear and tear. And I told him I'd read it to the select board for him. So... He said that, I'll read, on that day, the tar road from the bottom of Christian Hill Road was taken off as I came down from my house to go into town. I was going 25 miles an hour to Ansel Pond and 25 to 15 miles an hour to the main road. It was really rough as there were lots of big rocks on the road. As I drove downtown to s &B Auto Service to check on my tires, I had a soft leak on my back tire for a long time. When CJ looked under my truck, he saw a broken back rear leaf spring on both sides. He told Mike that he, I shouldn't drive it until he fixed it. Then Mike Rogers looked under the back rear of my truck. He said, you're not driving this truck until it's fixed. Mike gave me a ride home so I could get my dad's truck to drive until the next day it was fixed. So <clears throat> we did. I explained to Gary in an email that the only thing that the select board had done was taken care of tires on Christian Hill, and it did cut him a check for $105.95 for to get his tire repaired. Um, I am not a mechanic, but any research I did on leaf spring sounds like it's a wear and tear type thing, that it takes a while for something like that to break down, unless, of course, you hit something really hard, maybe at a high rate of speed, but as I said, I'm not a mechanic. Um, I'm just reading to you what his statement is. So. The mechanic I talked to said Toyotas are notorious for rusting out underneath. Okay. And it wouldn't be a one one shot hit to break yeah. it. I did talk to the road foreman and asked him and he and he said the same thing. He said that that takes a while before something like that breaks. Um, and felt that maybe it just happened to be poor timing, that maybe it was already in a situation and then it just went. But so as I said, he did he came in on Friday. And he was handed the check for 105 for his tire. Yeah, I was just kind of looking through the notes that were on the S and B Auto yeah. repair thing, and it seems like pretty much all the notes, if it refers to the leaf spring in general or the other two things that he went in for, all seem to be long-term maintenance. 
yep. you know, over long periods of time issues. Yep. You know, yep. things that were rusted shut and things that were, you know, holes that were plugged years ago or, you know. Um, and I would agree. I don't think um, anything on that road damaged the leaf spring to that that piece of it. Um, Right. I mean, I think you, you kind of have to get at the point is like, you know, had had he hit something in the road and there was an officer that came to the scene, you know, and there was documentation that this happened and, you know, it was towed from the scene and then there was, I guess you're in a different thing. I mean, here you're kind of on a day. We're not sure which day it was. Well, but, yeah. You know, I mean. I think he said on the day and I, he may have said in. We've exchanged several emails, so he may so, have said prior. You know, it's either probably, you know, somewhere around May 30th, May 31st, depending on how fast they got him in, and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he said it was fixed the next day. Yeah. So it must have been the 30th. And 127,000 miles on the truck. Mm -hmm. Yep. He, he might have been going 25 and 15, but he might not have. Mm -hmm. He might have hit something really hard over the last few years. Might not have. <laughs> um, he almost ran into me today. Oh, no. Almost rear-ended me. I'll, he wasn't there, and all of a sudden he was there. Oh, he didn't hit you though. No. Oh, jeez. I don't think he wants to. That big hitch on the back of that truck and that little Toyota. <laughs> I would have just. Oh God, damn that little <laughs> woodchuck! <laughs> and I kept like going. <laughs> oh no. All right. But I mean, typically, and I wasn't here for the meeting that we okayed the tire reimbursements. But typically. You know, towns are, are a whole harmless scenario where the only way you have anything against the town is you have to bring it forward. So there's a pothole in Main Street, let's right. say, and if you drive through the pothole and pop your tire, the, the town is held harmless because right. the town maybe didn't know about the, the, the pothole. However, if you went to the town and said, you have this pothole that's in the middle of the street, and six days later you hit it and you damage your vehicle, you could be hurt. Right, held, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at that point, because the town had an opportunity to fix it. You know, in this case, I know we we did some things with the tires, mm -hmm. um, but but I, I don't see how the town should be held accountable for that. Um, I know we're looking for, it, but I move to deny. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on it? For only. Lindley, you have anything on that or your remote? So we have motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That, um, public comment. Anybody have anything public comment wise that's anything that's not on the agenda this evening? Um, I have written to Jan Borg, who's the river management engineer. Uh, Department of Environmental Conservation and asked for um, removal of the gravel under the bridge and on both sides of the bridge on um, Route 12 where Camp Brook meets the river. A little cement bridge just about one mile north of here. It is almost to the top of the opening um, and there's a little stream on the left which runs through but that's about it. I have, do have some pictures of it, if you're interested in seeing it. Um, did you email your pictures to Jaren? I did. Oh, good. OK, perfect. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And um, I just it's been piling up for quite some time. But uh, since the heavy rain this summer, it's really, there's lots of it there. And it's on both sides of the bridge and under the bridge. So there is almost no opening under the bridge anymore. So if we really do have a high water event like Irene, which washed out around the south side of the bridge to within a foot and a half of the, it removed the highway and left the bridge. But it could be another big event. And I lost my driveway at that point and 600 feet of trees and driveway. And, and that was interesting. And the town took out a great deal of gravel after Irene. They worked there almost two weeks. Wow. for restoration in Camp Brook. And I do have, um, I have documentation of all that project.
that, and they put in a, um, and I gave you a diagram of it there, they put in different J, what they called um, J hooks, which are, yeah. and tree balls, and um, big pieces of granite, and um, the upper ones, the big J hooks are big, like this, um, with huge boulders of granite, or big stones, and that creates pools, which slows the water down. Um, they put root balls in there, and then there was a planting of buffers on either side of the road. And if you just stop on the bridge and look up the brook, you'll see that it all works exactly as it's supposed to. There are willows and other trees on either sides of the brook, and it all holds everything in place as it's supposed to. But the gravel has um, built up in the bed under the bridge and on the other side where it goes into the river. We are not landowners on the other side of the bridge. Would you do me a favor? Would you forward that email to me with the pictures that you sent to Jaren? Because then tomorrow, when, um, tomorrow I'll forward that to um, Chris Bump and then I forget the gentleman's first name, maybe it's John. Um, anyways, that does maintenance of that area because it's not Ryan Slack, even though it's Bethel. So I can forward him to Chris Bump and the other gentleman that I forget his name. Anyways, I made a note. And I can send it to both of them tomorrow too. That way, since Jaron hasn't gotten back to you, I can tell them that it went to Jaron. Plus, then they could put on their radar to come and take a look at. So I can do that tomorrow. We actually own a, a sliver of land on the north side of the brook too, which allowed us to be the landowners who agreed to put in the, the buffer and all that. Because she showed the picture. That's if it's it, yeah, if it's, if it's in around the say the right away of the bridge, then going through the district would probably be the best way to do that. Because the I, if it was farther up, you know, like where the most of that restoration project took place, then that would be more like Jared's. Out of there too. Yeah. That would be more like that would be more Jared. And they'll work together. Jaron will work with but, Chris Bump. And but the district can come out there and unplug that mm -hmm. and really not have to even consult with or, environmental on that. Or they can um, hire someone to come right. out and take it out. So Yeah, I just yeah, get that to Chris Bump. And yeah. You should be able to have it done. That's, I saw them out there doing that on a couple other ones. So Yeah, so I'll send it to both Chris and... Um, what is his name? Whatever his name is. John, maybe Booker, but... I can't remember. I want to say it's like Booker or Broker. Bump. Bump. Chris Bump. Yep. He's our district, our district four project manager. So I can send it to him tomorrow and and, and I'll send it to the other gentleman that oversees it. Because when we were having flooding in that area on that day, this gentleman and I were exchanging emails. So while his name escapes me, I know I have his email address. So I'll send it to he and Chris bump and um, because I'd send it to Ryan Slack but Ryan doesn't maintain that section so I'll okay. get it. Rain up comes all the way down to like the old Valley Motors lot. Yeah they come down to yeah that place that was flooded on um, the trailer park is under their jurisdiction. No yeah it's right before, yeah right exactly so yeah so we'll get it to the right people tomorrow and let them know but the pictures were that's why I'd like to send the pictures to Chris Bump so he could see how we're not you know that he doesn't have a lot of time to well, at least at the lots, minimum. Lots more um, documentation of the project, which was done in Camp Brook, the restoration project, yeah. with um, state, federal, and local agencies. Yeah, and he agencies. should have that, too. Or yeah. But I, I'll scan him this, too, and, and mm. I'll scan him your drawing, and you send the email, then I can send him the pictures, because that way, I think the picture, just seeing that one picture you showed me, I think that will really get the message across quickly on, yeah, like this. Well, if you go happen. stand on Finley Bridge, you can see all that debris where it yeah. kind of, what what of it did push out <laughs> into the river, you can see quite a discharge of yeah. material that's still sitting there. Now, they'll probably never touch that, but yeah. the stuff in and around the structure, mm -hmm. they should be able to get pretty easy. We had to do that under Lime Bridge after the 2019 yeah. flood, so. Yeah, no, we'll get it to them tomorrow. Gravel out below and under the bridge, then the rest of it will clear out too. Yeah. So. No, so we'll get it to them tomorrow. And then um, if I hear anything back, I'll, I'll let you know. Right. And then hopefully
hopefully they. Question while we're on this topic. Is there any consideration for uh, Conservation Commission? Is there any consideration for doing something uh, above the fire station with that area that clogs there all the time? Yes. Such yep. as a bridge instead of a culvert? Well, we have. I haven't set up the meeting yet, so I just got the last bid awarded today. I'll issue contracts this week, and then I'm going to get a hold of Chris Bump, and I have Chris Bump. Dave Aldrighetti, Tim Aldrighetti, Chris Jarvis, and a couple people, and Ryan Bidlack to come together to see what our options are. They're moving forward because it, you know, it jeopardizes all the people in the trailer park. Plus, we have our emergency shelter at the school, so it's on the radar. It's just, like, you know, one thing at a time. But to figure out what exact, and I'll ask Jaron too to come to see what our options are there. It would have to be um, a wider structure. That's yeah, and it's and it's not ours. We just want to facilitate a conversation. So uh, Dave Aldrighetti was there, Chris was there. So the people that were there can talk to Chris Bump and maybe Jaron and say, look, this is where the water came. This is what the situation is. This is And, and see, you know, they're the ones who are going to foot the bill and figure out the fix, but at least have a conversation so they understand our concerns. Um, and, and then we'll see what they do with it. I will email that to you. Thanks, Mary. All right. Anybody online? Only one person. That's Owen. So, other He's than him. He's saying no. <laughs> I have something that's not on Okay. You want to do that under public comment or do it under? Whenever you whenever you want me to do it. Plus. Okay. We'll do it now then. How's that? Oh. I put together some pictures that I took this weekend that concerned me on. Um, and this is just Christian Hill, Morse Road, okay, see. We have to share. and uh, <laughs> some of uh, Sanders Road. Okay. Um, didn't get them together all the same, but if you look at this picture. Yep. You'll see what basically it's kind of like what she was talking about about yeah. cleaning out uh, from under the bridge. If you don't go all the way to the river, it's going to plug just like that. Yeah. Because that's what's happened on these culverts right here. This is the ditch is not cleaned all the way to a place all the gravel below, comes off below the level the of the yep. bottom of the culvert. So three rainstorms and it's plugged again. Yep. And the top picture is Barry Artels. Yep. He went put a new culvert in and it's plugged because the ditch, yeah, the I ditch can see is it. not there to let it, let it get away. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Then uh, let me see. Tree removal. You can on that on my for my problem. front page, okay, Morse yep. Road. Yep, I see that one. That hole will would eat up my truck. Oh, it's I see. In it. a hollow on a corner by a driveway. No signage, no repair work, nothing. Okay. I really think we should be doing something about that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. That that culvert that needs to be replaced out on River Road. Which one is it? Which picture are you looking at? Um, oh, I was on the next. No. Not really a great picture that she took. She took this picture, but... Oh, it, River it, Road southbound. Yeah, there's no signage out there to let people know that all of a sudden that's a one-lane road. It, there was signage out there, and um, we have had signs and cones like crazy stolen, but there was signage out there. So That's where there'll be a good conversation I know where it about is. that. So there'll be a conversation about that here somewhere because there's cones up and down my road. They're just sitting inside the road and the works middle and done. Yeah. So I'll have We're having a lot of issues with people moving. I'll stuff. Make a like note. even on Finley Bridge Road, they've been moving people, <laughs> kids probably, or young adults have been out there doing raising havoc. Um, and then I'll just make it out to pick up cones on They've been messing with the cones and signs and grade stakes, all the staking that we this, did is this picture. Gone. Morse Road picture, the yeah. tree. Yeah, I see that. That's going to be a... In the road. Has that been leaning like that for a while, or did yep. it just start? Ever since the rain started. Oh, jeez. Okay. You look at that, that stump is actually across the brook. Jeez. And the brook is just oh, eating, really? into it, eating into it, eating into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, if it was if it was me, <laughs> the time I need an ambulance, that son of a bitch is going to be in the, in the road. Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> That's true. Oh, what's this one? Oh, it's Christian Hill Road. Mm -hmm. So the one on the Christian Hill Road, were you saying that that was work that was done but has eroded since then? Yep. Yeah. No doubt. 
so there's some sort of type of drainage issue going on there. Yep. I'll give the list. Well, that's a, that's a long way to the brook. And D Dylan cleared it as far as down beyond this picture. But then there's a, uh, years ago, they put in a, uh, a catch basin. But it was the catch basin was so high that it caught all of this stuff and just backed up and plugged the culvert. Yeah, it's and especially too like we had gone out and we just know, put that culvert in. Yeah, no doubt. And we just gone out a few. You know, we'd gone out right after the flood, so and staked all that area and measured it. And we know. I mean, I estimated all the quantities based off from that. But we know what's probably was six inches deep then after several rains is deeper and. Then we have all this loose stuff, so then it's soft and it's draining back out. We are going to go out and hydro seed a bunch of the ditches that we've that are done, newly done, so we don't lose those. So um, we were just buying, uh, buying ordering seed today for that. But I'll give the list to Morgan tomorrow and have him go out and, and tap. I mean, I what he has. I'm thinking physics wise, if you clean that ditch tomorrow, the next rainstorm is going to almost clean that dit, uh, mm -hmm. culvert. Those it's going to have somewhere to go. The one near our Ertels and the junction of Sanders. Yeah, it, yeah. But, it, but there's no place for the exactly. to go. Exactly. Yeah, no. The problem we have is that the, this the, one? the Sanders Road one is the material coming from the hill washes down into that. So, like, every time. It, this is probably one of those areas that make it up once a year you to go and remediate that yeah you know yeah because this cause isn't that, that new one they put in that you helped them with is it it is yeah yeah oh, this so is where this we is, i call this, this the intersection <laughs> intersections right here <laughs> this is david he's culvert yeah this is the intersection where we stopped the paving there okay all right it's all i mean it's always been an issue i mean this year material comes special, this way and material special comes year this way. yeah I, well, I mean, we had two and a half days without rain. I mean, that that, w that was a celebration. Yeah, no kidding. It's crazy. We, we isn't haven't it? had two and a half days without rain. I know. Summer. They're saying what? Maybe Wednesday, Wednesday. is rain and yeah, we because rain in my house to, today. Dietrich, it did our yeah here too. Dietrich has to empty the pool because the fiberglass people need X amount of days dry in a row. I'm like, good luck because we haven't seen <laughs> that. Put tarps up. Yeah, so it's gonna be crazy. But these ones are challenging in Sanders because the drive culverts are so shallow because there's so much ledge that runs yeah. that length of that road. Actually, there was some of those didn't even have drive culverts before the 19 flood. We put those in after, yeah. and we could only go down so far without, you know, getting into ledge. Well, that's, you know, when I put my curb cut in, my my excavator had to pound the ledge to put the culvert down where it belongs. I no doubt. I'm not surprised. No, it's just, you know, that tree should just get knocked. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Is there any power lines right near that tree? No. So Doesn't that should be it. that should be an easy one. You could just close That's the road a... off for yeah, half an hour it. and just drop the tree and get it out of the way. Yeah, they absolutely can manage. I'll get it to them tomorrow. No, you got you got the Thank boys you. up there on up, up towards Smith Farm. You got loggers and everything up That's, there working right now. I know That's where that the, is. One of the spots. Yeah, yep, I know. Peep, yeah, I know where it is. Road there. But that, that, one is that nice hole that'll eat my truck up is... I On Morse? Yeah, you take a dump load, a dump truck load of something up there and dump it in. <laughs> Some of Mary's material, dump it <laughs> yeah, in that exactly. hole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they River take rock. that out and let us take it. Yeah, be useful. So, all right, that's perfect. Thanks, Dave. I'll give it to Morgan tomorrow. I'm really appreciating how deep we dug mm -hmm. up there at Finley Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've noticed even, like, I, I can't even remember where it was. Somewhere I was driving this weekend. Get your jacket. Around Mary. here. Mary, Mary, Mary your, your jacket. jacket. Oh, yeah, I'll need it. You might. You know when you get out there, you'll need it. They, even after now, even after the flood, everything's so you. saturated that yeah. you're starting to see some of the embankments that were, we'll say, fine during... Yeah during the flood are now starting to slough off. Yeah. Um, I was, that's why I was kind of, I wondered if that Morris farm one was something that happened after the flood. Cause I, somewhere around here I saw, it was on a state road where I saw they had well, you got big off. sloughed off into the garden. Route 14 and looked down yeah. over the bank into the, that, that river. And that, that whole the side you can see is, is coming into the river. Yeah. Wow. There's been a lot of, a lot of runoff from the rain. And if, if you're ever talking to the guys that want to leave the wood in the brook, go up by John Hodgson's old house, and we left the uh, tree in the brook, and it's made a beautiful dam, so now any amount of water at all has got to come out into our brook. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Get up with the state. Yep. I know. We have that. I don't, 
not just the green. The news, leave the trees and the rocks in the brook. Oh, yeah, because it's going to make Rocks I can understand, that. but trees are going to fall like straight across the brook. Cut them in half. Maybe let them do something different. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, we'll pass that along. Yeah, just, thank you. I just, I, uh, I met I, this, these people and I stopped there and I said, holy crap. Like I said, that would eat up my truck. Yeah, I wonder if that sloughed in afterwards because I don't think that was there during. I didn't go out there after the flood. But. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's fine. We'll go, it get it might have been. How many How many little rainstorm events did we have? A dozen since then. <laughs> At least. But, but yeah, right now, it's it seems not like good. every day. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, is even you. if we only get a quarter in or, or three quarters of an inch or an inch of rain now everything's so saturated it's just Thank you're starting to see trees fall over into roadways and you know because everything's just Thank you. so wet well we have a vernal pool in our woods in the spring yeah and i've lived there for since 1979 yeah. and by the first week in may it's dry it was 18 inches deep a yep. week ago yeah it's been oh, a lot of water wow. still yeah it's crazy it dried out yesterday. It's no longer dried out. <laughs> well, the, across my street, across my house, there used to be a little runoff pond in the, in the spring. And then by July, it'd be bone dry. That thing's been full of water since Irene. Now it's like a permanent pond out there. <laughs> so now Loose the bugs pond. are a thousand times worse. And, yep. you know, everything's bad. It's true. Bad, bad. Which leads me to talk about what I'm, what I'm saying is we've got to get on top of this or yep. we're just going to, because I'm guessing FEMA's going to say, yeah, we fixed it once. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> and we're still in that. We, I meet with FEMA, yeah, you could just one person tomorrow, yeah. but they won't come out for a while to look. So. No, thank God. We'll get it taken care that's of. That's stuff where some of that could get taken care of through that. Yeah, absolutely. But so, no, and great. that's good. The visual aids are helpful, so thank you. Well, now, now, now that I'm in the mood, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be, my, my wife says, be compassionate. The, the grading they did today, the, yeah, Todd. Cul the culvert that, we, that um, was put in two years ago at Vagos, the inlet side is higher than the road. So when he scraped over it, he scraped the culvert. Who installed it? Um, the guy from... Colorado. Greg? No, his, the, his program. Alan. Alan. Okay, so it's the one near Faco's. Yeah, and the right. guy that goes, the inlet is here, and the outlet's here. So it's got okay. a kind of big hump in it. So it needs some right. material it, need, it needs to come out and be put in correctly. Mm -hmm. Is but there a ledge or something in there, maybe? Could be. Yeah, could. But that that's what they make hammers an issue. for. That's what they use hammers for. Yeah, it's but would we, yeah, we wouldn't usually, if we get in that problem, we'll kind of move it a little bit. Move it so up or it's, down. I'll have, um, anyway, it should be looked at. Uh, I'm adding it to the list. They, and they, like I, I've said before, we've run out of gravel on Christian Hill, so you're grading ledge now. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Todd. I am, I'm done. Thank you for listening. Yeah, of course. Thank Sounds you. like Dave wants to be put in charge of those projects then. So That's right. A couple less I have to do. That's right. I'll um <laughs> I'll give this to Morgan tomorrow. So yeah. thank you. All right. And that's helpful too because it shows exactly where the spots are and it's nice. It's not just like a vague. Yeah. So I, I was appreciate. Out visiting the neighbors, so I'm taking pictures. But no, but it's helpful. It's really handy. Well, thank you. That's some folks I've never met before. See. Spreading the good news. <laughs> We're out. All right. So we'll get to the um, first item, which is the added item. Um, so the access to tracks. Yeah. The uh, money's all covered inside the VOREC grant. We just need an approval from the board to purchase those mats for $1,412. Yeah. Correct? It, yeah, there's 17 mats, 51 by 3 foot path. Each mat is three by three and can be connected on all four sides. They come with Velcro hinges, and then it's shipping and great. So, yeah, the money yeah, comes out of the bull rack. Yep, we'll yep, pay for yep. It. Exactly. So, yes. So I told Chris I'd ask, and um, Chris, I had told Chris fours I would ask. 
$1,412. So we have a motion from Dave to approve. Second from Gene. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, eyes and hands. All right. Thank so, you. Lindley, <laughs> off topic a little bit. So, I was in a, um, it, was, it was on the school board end of things. Um, and they were talking about hybrid methods and doing um, when we have people um, remote on voting that we should actually, the best practice for that is actually to have them unmute, say aye or nay, and then, and then, and then mute back again. So we don't, See, the at the school board, are okay. At the school right? meeting, we have usually like two or three in attendance and three oh. or so not in attendance. Right, that makes sense. So they say the best practice is to have remote people unmute, actually verbally say something rather than, you know, most people are like, yep, thumb up or whatever. So I don't know if we want as a board if we care or not, but I learned that there uh, last week, so. So I don't, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't know if it matters with us because mo most of us are in attendance. In person, right. But like with the school, half the people aren't even there. And this all. is all being recorded. Yeah. yeah. Which the school, I don't know if the school is. Oh, yeah. The yeah. school does too. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, it's just, just nice to hear up. Lindley's yeah. voice. So we'll, <laughs> nice to hear from her. Or whoever might be right, remote whoever's next remote. time. That's right. So, all right. So we got through that. Uh, we have cater permit for Babe's Bar for October 1st, 9 to, or sorry, 3 to 9 at the White Church. For a music event is all it says on the, um, boy, these things are vague, Owen. We used to get a nice little permit, and now we have this weird printout from the DLC. So it just says. Basically nothing. It, yeah, it really says nothing. Contact Jesse. And then it says start of the event, end of the event, mm -hmm. physical location, and somewhere on here it said the music event. Um, yeah, caterer, and so not much in here. So yeah, if there's anything really... you want to add, feel free, because it doesn't say much. Um, yeah, so this is actually an exciting event um, that we were approached by the Vermont um, Chamber of Commerce. No, the Vermont Humanities Council, yes, um, approached us about this, and they are wanting to put on arts events and music events in smaller towns throughout the state. Um, and so they approached us about hosting the band Purple, which is a Prince cover band <laughs> um, that they uh, initially wanted to do um, at the bar um, in the parking lot like we've done for Forward Fest. But because it's going to be in October, um, the band actually preferred to do it indoors. So um, our capacity at the bar is not super big, especially if it's just a first floor event, which something like this would be. So, um, yeah, we asked the White Church and they were into it. So we're planning on hosting that band there inside. Um, and it'll be a great opportunity to partner with the Humanities Council. They're really excited about Bethel and... Yeah, so we're, we're feeling good about it. It'll be a small bar offering, probably just like a couple of beers and a wine. Um, but, you know, having something there so it has that concert feeling to it. Was the time right, three to nine? Yeah, I think the show is going to be from four to seven, so that just gives us some buffer room on setup and okay. all that people wind up hanging out after the show is a little bit. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was what you were looking for. Yep. All right. Yeah. So just need a motion to approve that. Move. Second. Move. Moved by Jean. Second. Denise. Denise. All in favor? Aye. Is that an aye, Lindley? You didn't unmute. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll give you a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. And then we have resignation of Joe and 
Yeah. Or Joe. Yeah, I was going to say Joe. Bo and Jody. <laughs> Judy. Joe and Moody. Oh, oh, and Lister's there because they are going to end up moving up north. Yeah, they actually sent a, gave me a letter Friday, but um, so it didn't go in your packet. It just says, hi, Therese, just to confirm that Mo and I will be stepping down effective September 15th as Lister's for the town of Bethel as we're moving to Hyde Park and will no longer be residents of the town. So... Says thanks and have a nice day. Well, like I told Mo the other day, I said if we don't accept his recommendation, yeah, then they're still technically <laughs> listers, right? So exactly. So so we can just do that. It's easy. Yeah. So it looks like. Uh, so, at this point, what we'll do is um, I've already contacted Nemeric. There are the people that are doing the townwide reappraisal, but they also manage our software anyways, and they can they do. Um, they do listing for other towns yeah. as well. So I did contact Chris Mealy at Nemrick right away, and they are able, they'll be able to, basically we'll contract with them to do some work. Um, Rick Benson is coming in. He's going to meet with Mo and Judy, I think, on Thursday. He's going to come in and do the, um, we have some zoning permits that need to be valued so that they can get added to the grand list so that as Mo reminded me we don't want the grand list to be stagnant for the next two years so he's going to come in meet with Mo and Judy on Thursday to get caught up on what needs to be reassessed and or assessed for zoning permits Kelly's making sure that Judy has them all so we'll do that and and I would say at this point most likely in March a town meeting will be moving forward to um you know get rid of the listers and contract it out it's it's it takes and mo and judy will tell you about three years to have somebody fully trained and now that the state has just come out with vermont pie or vt pie what was already a complicated you know position becomes even more so so that kind of makes the most sense and while we're going to pay for nemrick services we may be able to figure out in-house how to do a couple of the small things like inputting information from pttrs but at this point i'm not guaranteeing anything well we're you know i know nemrick will take it on and and i've spoken with chris mealy and you know that's what we'll, we gotta do what we gotta do yeah. at this point so and also nemrick will be here anyways over the next two years doing the townwide reappraisal so that also helps to they'll get to know Bethel so all right so just need a motion to accept resignations from them so um, moved is that a, we acknowledge the resignation with deep appreciation thank you Jean Sec second second oh, okay yep all in favor Aye. And and then uh, we we're going to appoint Pam Brown to the listers to be able to so do some signature so we can, Yes, basically items. as a signature, yes, because yeah. Paul Valley is currently a lister, so that gives us a signature, but we need to have a second. So, you know, just in case, I'm not sure, you know, what or when at this point I have any chance to kind of focus on their schedule, but, you know, when you need to lodge a grand mm -hmm. list, we need to do a couple things. You need a couple listers, so... Pam's willing to be a signature. Uh, she was your lister before. Um, she, she was before Paul. And um, I think she might have right, signed a couple things for them. Yeah, so. So we just need a motion to appoint. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes. Lindley's raising her hand. Um, and then the, um, the request for federal assistance via the emergency watershed protection program. Yes, this is it's a confusing Which thing. Which is already... We did it before, days. after April 2019, and um, the, the if a, this letter is, ba is going to, that Chris will sign, is to get us into the process so that the EWP folks, Mike LaPointe, can come out and look at properties that may, that may qualify for this. Then... We are the sponsor, which means we put the work out to bid. We do all sorts of stuff. But we can say we will do that share as the sponsor, but the landowner has to pay their 25%. We're not paying private properties 25%. So the state will pay or the feds will pay 75. We do, and the owner will do 25. We had two people qualified for it in 2020, and neither took advantage of it. So, but it's, uh, but I know Alex Reisterer um, has approached Mike LaPointe um, and he's interested in, 
in, you know, to see if he can qualify. Because certain things have to be in jeopardy. It can't be just land. It has to be like you're going to lose your house, your well, your septic, or something like that. So um, this just allows them to come out and go look at stuff. And then we'll see who takes advantage of it or not. And then it's a process after that. But what is it, right? <laughs> so, so that's what I'm asking for. So we put in myself as administrative contact, Morgan as a technical contact, but they require that the chair signs it. Okay. Any further discussion on that one? Just I'll move we authorize uh, the tenant to be as possible. And for myself to sign it? Okay. We have second. Second, Dave. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. And then we have the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and passive and verb annual meeting voting delegate. Yeah, I just don't know if anybody is planning on going to the town fair. Are you, Lendley, going to the town fair? No? Okay. If somebody's going to the town fair, um, then they could be our voting delegate. So if you want to go, I can sign it. And um, it's, you know, you just sit there and listen to the, um, well, the town fair has lots of things you could attend to, but the um, annual meeting, you basically you'll vote on whatever their, um, you know, whatever their policy th changes are for the year. So if somebody's going um, and you want to do it, you can be the delegate. If not, then other towns. Well, we've had a couple of years where people have gone, and we've mm -hmm. had a couple of years where we weren't represented. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I went one year. I, I don't know, it's, I've been. It's kind of almost like if you're there or not there, it's going to happen yeah, type deal. Pretty um, much, yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess the only thing I got out of it was, you know, it was a good opportunity to meet others from mm -hmm. other towns, yep. you know, um, and, and maybe learn a little bit more um, on the process. But About other, VLC, but, yeah, but, uh, and it's all insurance. But other than that, it was like, you know, whatever it was, gone. was chance they're going to go through regardless of you're there or not. So, yeah, they do generally um, publish their policy stuff in mm -hmm. advance. And I've never found anything that I was opposed no. to in all the years I've been doing it. They really have such a good connection with towns and things. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to decide. I mean, if you want to know you're going today, then they can motion to approve you. But if not, just you decide in a couple weeks, let me know. But if you know right now, you really want to go. <laughs> is, it's like in September. Yeah, it right? says September 26th at 1 o'clock in South Carolina. And so three, three, right, three huh. annual meetings. Will, so it's not <laughs> that's in, yeah. it's in Chittenden County. Yeah. Three annual meetings will be held consecutively, verb, passive, and BLCT. So mm. that's it. So if you want to go, let me know. Okay. Uh, I might, I might want to go again. I, I, at this point, I don't. But that's the 26, you said. Yeah. Yeah, it's in your... I gave you this. I know. I'll just see what comes up if my calendar is open. Then maybe I'll I don't know. You'll probably be overseeing some road work. Um, and we just have to vote. We have to designate our voting delegate. Oh, by Friday, September 8th. So don't dawdle if you want to go. <laughs> so, but you can still go to town fair and you can sign up for that. Okay. All right. And then we had the greater repair yep. bill. So we've been talking about this for a while, and this, I gave you the price from John Deere, and I spoke with AJ, and he said there's up to $8,000 in in parts in there that we may not need, but he prefers to let, you know, John Deere make that decision. We talked to him. That was going to be my question. There's some stuff in there that, without even looking at the grader, I'm pretty sure we don't need. Yeah, and that's what he said, and he just... We had talked about sticking with John Deere since they'll warranty it and the parts and that. And honestly, the bottom line is this. We cannot afford a grader. We cannot afford a new grader. So the people that were present for the equipment committee were like, look, let's put this money into it because we have a couple of issues. We have the, um, the we went through and really updated again 
the equipment schedule and prices since COVID have gone through the roof for equipment. So we're really going to have to increase our appropriation to the capital equipment fund. So I went through the last time for our equipment committee and did the math and we're like, look, by making a greater payment, increasing the appropriation to where we need to be, I said, coming out of the gate, I was at like, I think it was about 4.7%. I said, nobody's got a raise, no one's insurance has gone up, nothing. I said, we haven't done anything but these two things. I said, we cannot afford to do this. So I said, what we could do is focus on, I said, also too, we need a new town garage. So the town garage needs to be something that we need to get out there to the voters. And um, I said, if we're going to increase, which we should, our appropriation to the capital equipment fund, I said, we have to do this. I said, you know, there's other departments besides the road, group, road department. So I said, I, you know, there's no way in good conscience I'm standing up in front of anybody asking for all this at once. So I felt, okay, then you know what? We need to repair. The grader itself is in good condition. So it's really just this issue and we did they did do what was called a planetary sampling where they take mm -hmm. oil samples the whole thing and really it was in the other part we're in pretty good we're in good shape so it seems like sounds crazy to say this, hours but the 60, that motor? I, mean, I, I want to say would 10,000 be eight or 10,000 I want to say that's a lot of hours and, but you also have to remember some of those hours are travel from it being driven from point A to point B. So not all the hours on this thing were grading. I'm not sure if it says on the estimate how many hours are on it. As I, I didn't did. see it anywhere. No. Yeah, no, sorry. I should have looked for you. Um, anyways, it's the, honestly, it's the most responsible or financially responsible thing to do. Uh, my question will be, is there... Uh, recommendation from John Deere to change our service timing? Not that I'm aware of, but I can, I mean, because that's the thing too, we, I went through this with um, Ray, Ray Blakeney, who's on the equipment committee, is the thing that happens here is you inherit equipment that's been through several road foremen. And when Morgan came, he did institute, well, before he, when he came and he was working for the prior road form, and he did institute a maintenance, so now we have records and we have, you know, regular maintenance, and that's one of the things we talk about. They do their in-house maintenance. They get their filters from them. They do all the scheduled services, um, but what we're doing now is looking at when we buy, like if we lease a piece of equipment, is looking at adding the money into a lease for them to come and do you know the service calls and things because then we know if we were leasing it would help hold the value of the equipment but at this point um john deere had this we're going to call it quote unquote a lease but it wasn't it was a loan and it was a pretty high interest rate and it wasn't um there was no, you know, like with a lease, you're going to pay for a portion of it. That's not the case with what they had at the time. So we're hoping that changes as well. So at this point, and we're also hoping that this way it can go and be gone for, you know, if it has to be out of service for a month, it'd be like the month of October. And then when it comes back, it's, it's fixed. So, we know so John Deere is going to rebuild it? Yes. They're going to buy that. You get the full block already comes and then the rest is, you know, parts and so based on, you know. So we have a small crew. Um, my thoughts are sometimes we have, the, the guys are doing things that are not their, not their, what I could say, not their job. Yeah. You mean and like maintenance their wise? Purview, so not, yes. It may, we need to have them out doing what they do. Right. We don't need them fixing the building or, or I don't know about the service, but that might be. Six they do the, they do the basic there's service. There's some things but, that yeah. it's just not their job. I agree with that statement. So, I agree. I mean, I know what I can do and what I can't do, and if I can't do it, I don't try yeah. to do it. And, and a lot of the stuff now has is so there's going to be, in a couple of years, we're not going to be able to do anything because it's all computerized, and we're just not going to be able to touch it. So, but yes, they do the general basic service. They do their own breaks they do you know certain things like that that they do but anything that's beyond that they know is going to take a while they send out because they just 
they don't have the time to do it. Your lawsuit, lawsuit on that service contract thing. Oh, really? Out west for all their big tractors, you know, the two million dollars. Oh, I saw tractor. that. The repair thing on the news the other day for farmers. They, they were, were saying. They said you can't get this, this uh, software. That's right. And the right. judge said, yes, they can. That's right, because they were, um, I wondered if they were leasing that or if they owned it. Like, if you owned it, you would think you'd get the software. But, yeah, no, I, Honda does something similar if you want to have your brakes fixed. <laughs> I found that out. But, um, so anyways, it, to me, it's it's the most so, responsible. Not that we're holding you to it, but so if we were to purchase a new grader, mm -hmm. You know, before we were talking, you know, it's roughly around a hundred thousand dollars a year payment or something like that, right? Yeah, right. I think so. Yeah, because it was eighty to hundred or whatever we were talking. Yeah, it was high because it was four hundred and some odd. Now thousand. this forty to sixty thousand that we're going to put into this, if mm -hmm. we decide that, mm -hmm. not holding you to it, but what do we feel we will realistically get out of that piece of machinery? Is this a four year? Four to five years. Okay, so I mean, we're talking on average a ten thousand dollar a year maintenance. You know. Yep. That we could add this, so you know, in a way, we're kind of saving seventy, eighty thousand a year. On, yeah. um, but if we do push this out, mm -hmm. <laughs> how does that look in four, four or five years' time for us to move forward with it's purchasing in, something? It's in the schedule. So basically, you're going to see it when we go to do the budget um, in you know whatever October, November. You're going to see the capital equipment fund contribution has gone up significantly so we have it in the mix okay. so that it's in there but right. what we're also hoping for is that that there will be a lease program um, for something like that because there is um, I talked to um, a gentleman from oh it's initials in uh, Middlebury they're a dealer uh, over there, I can picture them. I just saw an ad on TV for them the other day, and they have like where they sell Jeeps, and they have like a little thing out back where you can oh, try them out. You know, you know Gardner. what I mean? Huh? Yes, Gardner. So, anyways, they I talked to their sales rep one day when I was at the garage, and AJ was there. We were talking to him, and he said for some of their other equipment, they do have like what we're looking for lease programs where you're purchasing a portion of. So maybe you have it for a few years, and then you turn it in, and so you're not. You know, yes, maybe you're making a payment, but you're not getting into, you know, huge expenses. So I'm really hoping that we can find something like that with a grader or we find, you know, a good quality used one. Mm -hmm. So as I gave the road crew that, that website that you gave me. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think tough. my experience in the town that I feel <clears throat> and, and I don't I don't think anybody was intentionally trying to do anything wrong, but especially during Alan's stay, is we use that grader more like a personal vehicle to move all over town. Yeah. And I, and one of the things that breaks down a piece of equipment like that is by putting mileage on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even though it will travel at a certain speed for a certain distance, it's, it's not made for that. I agree. So, and we used to see it constantly. Like, I'm not kidding you. Like, one day they'd be in East Bethel. The next day they'd be up on Hooper Hollow, you know? Yeah. Or, or they'd be in East Bethel in the morning, Hooper Hollow in the yeah, afternoon. And exactly. I'm like, you're putting so many miles and hard hours on that grader yeah. that what I would yeah. hope that they would do going forward is instead Just of going back it. and forth, say, hey, you know what? For, for this whole week, we're going to be over yeah, at East Bethel. And when they're done for the day, they find a place to park it over there. And they, they do take, have places. Take the vehicle over here and not be going back and forth with it. Because that's what really puts a lot of strain on a piece like the grader. Yep. Um, and because I remember, like, Bill Brainerd, I mean, they parked Everybody it over saw there. the grader. I mean, the grader used to be almost a personal vehicle. It'd be, it'd be stopped out front of Champlain Farms to get a drink. You know what I mean? It was like, it was like what are we doing? Like, this yeah. thing is not meant for that. Yeah. You know, it, it's really meant to be a slow-moving Work, exactly. work hard vehicle. Not, I know that they have places down the road to drop it. Like so. Bill Brainerd said yeah. they could leave it there. They had some places, but I've had that conversation with Morgan and AJ before. We'll yeah. have it again. Or just, you know, again, no, when they're going to tackle grading type things, leave it in a section of town for a period of time. Absolutely. Not just don't feel obligated. They have to bring it to the garage every night, exactly. you know? Exactly. I mean, uh, just. <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah, you know, just, it is what you got to do. Or find, you know, find different quadrants of like where you can park it in each quadrant. my hill. They graded just over a mile of road and then left. Mm -hmm. 
the right. road from where they stopped on to some of these places all needed grading. Yeah, I don't know. But they didn't get there till late right. in the morning. They that were would gone be early afternoon. Yeah. yeah. No, no unnecessary awesome. movement of that right. grader unless it, you need to, you know. Same thing in the wintertime. I mean, it's... Yep, exactly. You know, it's not a plow unless yeah. it has to be. I mean, once in a while you get that, that snow event where you need some help. Well, and last year, remember, we had no choice. The International was down, so Morgan was using yeah. it to do Christian Hill because you had, we didn't mm. have a lot of alternatives. So, but yes, now that the International is running and... Which, I've got which International? The, the, the blue? Truck. Yep. The little truck? Last day I was up there, they said it was down again. It was. <laughs> And then you they, just put a motor in it, right? They took it. To, no, uh, yeah, but we took it to um, this time to Reeds, not back to um, Burlington. So we, it, it went to a different dealer, hoping that then um, it's come back and we haven't had an issue since. So, mm -hmm. but we weren't having good luck up there. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, idling. Some of the diesel stuff, yeah. they leave idling for hours. Yep. Is that necessary? Yeah. I can't answer that. I mean, I, I think it is in the winter time, but I, I can't. Uh, I'm talking about in the last couple of weeks. I don't know. Can you guys? Is it town related or not town related? Like, is it is it is one it, of our pieces or is it someone that's working on the road? That's no, the it's our people using, they were using it. It was a big hauler. Oh, that's so Derek. That that's Derek. Yeah, that's not that's Derek. So it wouldn't be anything that Aldrich we would. Eddie's. We would. Yeah. Like if it was like the town's piece of equipment, yeah. we'd probably. Do, I mean, that that's a private piece of equipment. I mean, not to say that's best practice, but. Yeah, I don't know what the best practice is for diesel. I don't. Do you have a diesel truck? Yeah. It depends on what you're doing. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're not using it for a period of time, maybe a, a half an hour, then shut it off you know there there are some pieces of equipment once you get running you know you keep it running for the day but, yeah but um i, I think i, I remember that day because i had stopped in there to see him and he had mentioned that he, he forgot he left his his uh haul truck running down there i said well that's gonna be pricey he's like well actually it doesn't burn that much <laughs> yeah. i was like well you're gonna find out Come if you left it running today. all day yeah it's definitely not best practice i mean it you know it's probably nothing that we can police as the town we don't have an ordinance or anything like that, but no. but well, if I it, can also ask Morgan. I don't know. But if it was one of our pieces of equipment and it was running all day, I mean that would yeah. be a best practice. We could talk to them about. Yeah. I don't think it was our. Yeah. I think we. I think our folk were running it. It might have been. Oh. But anyway, well, if it was on I, Friday, I just Morgan noted that, and I didn't Friday. know if there was a reason. I, I wouldn't to know. keep yeah. it going or not. I'm okay. Sorry, sir. I don't know. D what do you know about diesel, Lindley? Can you answer Jean's question? <laughs> she can build you stuff, but <laughs> I don't know. The um, so we just need a motion to approve up to sixty thousand through the capital funds um, to use towards the grader. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The last time we're going to have that on the agenda for what four years? Oh, that's from your lips to God's ears, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's the 16th. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's getting up there, but all right. And then the next uh, item um, for, well, for for tonight, anyways, that we're just reading off well, the. Just verify the date and time. I highlighted it. Yeah. But pretty much. It's just an informational yep. reading. Um, yes. Apprised of this? Um, uh, I, I assume both parties read the packet. Um, I know I saw um, Beverly, and she she knew about it, and um, asked if Andrew needed to be present, and I said no, and. Um, but no, there's a whole process has to go first. You have to set the date. And this mm -hmm. date is based around our attorney because he wants to be present because there's such a very specific, you know, da -da 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 to it. Mm -hmm. um, 
that he wanted to be present. This was a day he was available. Um, I know it says uh, 4 o'clock. If you wanted to go a little earlier, we could. I think that what he's trying to do is get as tight to your select board meeting as possible so you're not paying him to be here for 12 hours. But as Chris said, we could um, possibly make your select board meeting a little earlier. They want to make the because meeting I mean, at 5. If we meet up there at 4, I mean, that time of year, it's dark at 4.30. So I don't know how much you're really going to do before 4.30, you know what I mean? Yeah. That doesn't give you a lot of time to... It's probably going to be... Parties, we might be there for two hours. It's going to be darker up there, so I mean, I think you got to give yourself an hour up there, right? Yeah. And it, not to mention travel back, and yep. so... Um, so if you want to... You... Three and five? Sure. That's, That's what fine. I was thinking. Maybe if we went to a five o'clock board meeting and a three o'clock... Does that work for you, Lindley, on November 2nd? Yeah, so we're thinking we'd do a 3 o'clock, yeah, well, that we would do a 3 o'clock on-site inspection. inspection and then a 5 o'clock board meeting. Yeah, daylight savings time doesn't end until the following Sunday. Yeah, that's what David Rue said, but he's so he was, I'm like, you're calculating out, you're hoping. But it's getting it's, dark already. Right? <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. creeping up quickly. Mm -hmm. oh, so, I mean, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Does that work? I believe so. Oh, okay, good. It um, I believe so, yes, that we would meet up there. Day of the week um, is out. That is a Thursday. Thursday. That we would meet up there. Um, and obviously, we'll have more information as we go along. But it would be excellent if we could have all five select board members present. Uh, I don't think we need to have five or six cars. I no, we could carpool. Car, two or three more. Absolutely, that'd be great. Yeah, but if we could, multiples could go together. It's the Day of the Dead. Yeah, we could all. What? November second is the Day of the Dead. So we could, um, we could meet. You know, we could park our cars here and then carpool. Certainly, because I'd need to get the hall set up, and then um, that way. So if we meet here at two thirty. Yeah. Yep, we could what, would we? Oh, okay, gotcha. He's yeah. But we would actually start the meeting because wouldn't we have to start meeting up there? I think no? so, but again, I'll have more details. Right, okay. I, I didn't bring his. I full think we'd actually printout. have to start the meeting, right? Yeah. Um, he just says with the public hearing of the discontinuance to be held on this time, and uh, with a public hearing to be held at five, and an inspection of the premise to be held earlier in the day. So I, I'm probably would do something up there as far as calling. Maybe not, but okay. we'll get the details from David Rue. He already sent us that big, um, you know, list of the whole process. I did yeah, not okay. bring that with me, so I think I could review that. So you need this whole thing read off? Um, yes, someone needs to make okay. this motion. This is the way he laid it out. All right, so right road, uh, the right road discontinuance and date of inspection and hearing. Uh, motion that the select board commence discontinuance proceedings for the northernly most portion of Wright Road, Town Highway number 19, with the portion to be discontinued commencing at the northernly edge of the truck and plow turnaround area near Beverly Wright's Dairy Farm barn and southernly of her garage where the class, where the road is a class three highway and extending in a northernly, northwesterly mm -hmm. direction to the Rochester Bethel Town boundary line. With a public hearing on the discontinuance to be held November 2nd at 5 p.m., mm -hmm. and an inspection of the premises to be held earlier that afternoon at 3 p.m. The portion of Wright Road uh, proposed to be discontinued includes the entirety of the Class 4 section of Wright Road, Town Highway 19 being plus or minus 0.48 miles in length and any portion of the class three section of Wright Road northernly of the existing turnaround that is located southerly of Miss Wright's garage, which class three section is believed to be plus or minus 1,000 feet in length. That is the biggest run-on sentence I've <laughs> ever seen. There's not a single period in The there, lawyer right? wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my writing. Yeah. I just cut and paste. Spell them. check is going to have fun with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so just need a just need a motion. 
So moved. Okay, moved and second. Is that you, Lindley? Second it? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Gotcha. Okay, I'll let him know the time. Yeah, there's not even a single period in there. Let's... Well, there is down here. <laughs> <laughs> period. <laughs> Far away through. Oh, well done. I know, like I said, I just cut and pasted it from his email. And I, I measure some. So, update on flood repairs, bid results, and moving forward on fin Finley Bridge Road. Right. Yeah. Okay. Seems like in uh, our past meetings we've had discussion about the turnaround area. Mm -hmm. Is that description a good enough, accurate description so we don't have several meetings of why are you backing over here and driving it, it over there? It should be. I mean, this is what the lawyer wrote, and he has been on the premise, okay. and he, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm he just... said, near Beverly Wright's Dairy Barn, southerly of her garage. So, I mean, I, don't, I could I probably get... I know where I know. So I could get put a GPS location in there, I guess, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how... Maybe well, we'll we certainly we spell it out just when we're there. Seems like we have had... Yes, multiple... Questions yes, about that. You, we have, and we probably will continue to, but... But yeah. So since the lawyer wrote, I guess it's good. <laughs> but it's a good question, Dave, and we can always, um, I can, I'll mention it to him one moving forward if he wants, if we need like a, I mean, we have a 911 address for the barn and for her house, so maybe we include those. I mean, if I was gonna, if it was up to me, I would, I would just continue it right, right prior to the circle. And then we can, I mean, we can turn around or do whatever we want, wherever we want. Well, see, I don't think, I think, but, I think that's going to cause us more grief. Yeah, because the way they do it now. Discontinue it past the circle. Mm -hmm. and that circle is now the town road, so the boys have the right to use that. Exactly. Yeah. Around. No, uh, yeah, there's yeah. definitely that, yeah. Because I'm, I'm just thinking someone's going to say, well, you're doing favors again. If you go a hair over. So mm -hmm. We can turn around wherever we want to turn around. <laughs> salt, whatever we want to salt. Um, but it would make it easier because you never know. Like maybe the agreement we have with them now changes and yeah. somebody else buys it. I'll, or something I'll and, ask you know, him if we should have a more specific location. Position. But yeah, we I mean, and, th and that's or maybe it's supposed to be. Maybe there's we'll say this. Maybe there's a reason it's it's not as specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You never know the way those lawyers think. So, but I'll find out. That's perfect the way it be used. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so flood repairs. Uh, so the West Quadrant, that is Whittier, Lilliesville, etc., was awarded to W.B. Rogers. They were the low bidder. Uh, Cleveland Brook Road, uh, W.B. Rogers was the low bidder. Woodland Road, Jeff Townsend was the low bidder. Sand Hill and Peavine RFP, um, Aldrigetti Logging and Excavation was the low bidder. Abbott Road, Old Route 12, Fish Hill. Um, Aldrigetti logging excavating was the low bidder. So those are currently all of our bids that are out. I just got some information today from Jaron, so I'll be able to put, now I'll be able to put out our smaller section of Camp Brook Road out, which is a, a 18 inch culvert, a little bit of armoring, and some more riprap around Jim Ford's area. I got the dimensions today from Jaron, so I'll bid that separately. On Thursday, the state agreed to put us into what they call their IDIQ process, which is faster for a federal highway, and it takes um, a little bit of the burden off Dubois and King. They don't have to go through as far with drawings and bid documents. Uh, basically, it goes out to the pre-approved list of contractors that the state deals with, so it becomes faster because obviously both of those um, culverts have got to be done before snow flies. We had three hydraulic studies going on. We had two hydraulic studies done on Camp Brook Road. Those are both done and given to um, and have been sent to Dubois and King, so they're working on that. So at this point, that's all going forward their idea is to bid them so that it is one job because if we bid it as two separate then one has to haul from Rochester and one has to haul the other way so he wants to bid it as one you know both as one 
So that's moving along very smoothly. Um, the other hydraulic study I'm waiting for is Perm Road. I'm waiting for that one. And uh, Sand Hill, there's one culvert there that I'm I waiting for. The culvert that blew out on the Back River Road. I mean, we just barely put that culvert back in about four, three, four years ago. On Peavine? Peavine. Yep, so that's just, that's going back in at the same, at the same size. Oh. And, um, but there was some issues with that culvert, if I'm thinking of the same one. It was rotted at the bottom. Yeah, the, that, that was an old corrugated steel pipe that. Yeah, I know, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, but I'm hoping to get Sand Hill and Purim this week. And so that way, I had had, since Derek was awarded that bid, I messaged him today and told him which one of the, there was two large structures, and said, you can order this one, but you can't order because we don't know what they're going to recommend yet. So he was fine with that. He was going to let whoever he's working with know. Um, I spoke with Dan McCullough today, as well as Ryan Slack and Morgan, about the work being done on North Road. We... Um, authorized a purchase of two additional structures that will most likely be outside of FEMA for about $5,000. But if we're going to be in there, we got to do this right. So what has happened is there was the structure, I don't know the 91 address, but there's like a red car right there. So that structure, which we've had pumped out, which we believe has, you know, 24 inch coming out of it. Dan chased it a while and has found that it's, um, Oh, snap. I'm going to forget the name. It's pretty fragile once you, you can corner it. What's that type of pipe? Oh, crap. It can be really fragile when you hit it. Clay. Oh, yeah. Clay tile. Clay tile. So he's, so what we're going to do Orange is. Orangeburg. Excuse me? Orangeburg. Oh, I've never heard that term. So what I, we're, I'm still, fingers crossed, <laughs> that when we dig further down, we're going to hit another structure. But Ryan and. Dan don't think we're going to because of the way that the pipe is laid. He's like, the way they curved that in nicely, he said it's a nice belly. So I don't think we're going to find a second structure. But the idea is to put another one near Tessie's and then another one down further so that when we come across to connect into Ryan's or the state structure, we're just doing a longer term fix. We've already upgraded the pipe size and upgraded the pipe type. It just makes sense. We've had problems up there forever and a day, so we're in there. We will end up paying for some of that outside of FEMA, but it just makes sense to do it and do it right. So we have received all of the pipe, and then I just ordered those two catch basins from um, Weed today. So um, hopefully we'll get that project wrapped up here pretty soon. It's taken a while, but I have to say I really... Dan has done a really great job and kept Ryan in the loop, and he's had Morgan over there, Ryan over there to make sure that so all the moving parts. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now that we have, you know, one now we have those ordered. Once, because he said, once we get everything, they'll be able to go quickly, and we're going to give him a laborer for the day, you know, AJ or, or Morgan or somebody to help him um, to get it done. So, which is fine. And so that's coming along well. Then I met with. Um, gentleman from Geostabilization International, Dave Brogan, um, for Findlay Bridge. I had spoken with the state. They sent um, Jaron Borgow, so in the Narrows there, and it's, I, I talked to Chris Bump, our, our person, you know, and the engineer for the area and just said, look, it says right in the orange book, if we need help, you, you'll help us. And we need, I need help. So he came over. So Jaron came over and looked at it and he was pretty, he's the river engineer. And he said, yeah, you could rebuild, you know, the road with riprap from the base up and tow in the slope. And we talked about that. And he said he'd had just enough geotech background. He took a look at it. And then he looked across the road where it goes like this. And he's like, wow. <laughs> so is Chris Kidney a geotech, he said. So this gentleman approached us. I talked to Chris Bump about it. I met with him. They are putting, they came and looked, he came and looked at it, and they're doing a proposal for us at no charge at this point. I haven't seen it yet. I, he was hoping to get me a number by today. Um, he did a really good job explaining it. So there's a couple of options here, and I'm not going to lie, they're all going to be expensive, I have no doubt. But... One of them is like a soil stapling, and they, they stay up on the road, and you can see that in the brochure that we made a copy of, and they hammer these large nails way back into the ledge, and then 
they have a couple of options after that. They can spread like a mesh, and it reminds me of quilting because they have, there's like little puckers and in it is a screw and a nut to kind of tighten it down. They can cover that with, they can seed it. Uh, there's another option where they do spray concrete <coughs> on a bit more of a metal structure. And he said that when he looked at the bank towards the river, there was a couple places where he suggested that they would do the process that would require spray concrete. Yeah, that would require spray concrete, and then on the other side where the slope is, that it would be more of the other um, of the other part where they're kind of doing the the state the soil stapling. Like that on the road goes up to Ted Greens. Yeah. And there's a lot of clay in there, and that lasted about two years, and then yeah. that ended up in the river. Well, what's interesting here is um, he said that the way that they do it, because my concern is, of course, that if we built like a retaining wall or anything, there's still so much material up above that as it rains and trees come down, he said this stuff can have, if that some of that collapsed on top of it, it's really easy to clean up. He said that it, they, it's 75 years that it lasts. He said they would go down a ways to the river, and he said you don't go all the way down. We may require some riprap to be placed where into the toe of the slope. They check on it. They did the road to in Warren up to um, Sugarbush. He said he inspects it twice a year. And he said we have had to do a little maintenance to the toe of the slope, but this is goes in so far that it stabilizes that whole section top, you know, how many other feet of your road. So I talked to Morgan about it and um, you know, <clears throat> if we chose to, and I haven't done the quantities yet, if if we did the um, quantity, I just have to measure it, maybe do an estimate, but is how much riprap we would have to haul in there to do that bank along the river, and then however we were gonna use it to stabilize the, the slope where we have the landslide, is we could haul in riprap till the, you know, and get that all done, but then we all know with a heavy rain, a lot of that's gonna go. It's just not gonna, you know, this definitely seems like a more permanent fix, but I'm going to see, the reason I wanted him to come before FEMA was because FEMA may say, mm, you know, you don't have any culverts out here, or maybe they would just do the minimum, whereas if we talk about well, that's a bigger project, um, you know, I wanna see what they're gonna do because it's already slid again, you know, with all the rain since then, and it's just not, you know, that road isn't, you know, I did a I did a similar <laughs> job a couple years ago in Cavendish on 131, and that was a state job, and it was probably half the size of this one, and it was, I think it was around 1.6 million. Mm -hmm. And he's not... Uh, it's expensive. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it, I mean, it, it does work for the most part. I mean, I don't, quite, and I haven't. It's quite the ticket. It is, and I have not estimated the quantities like of how much riprap we so would. Not rip -rap free, right? Well, let's freeze a, a relative term because we have to have somebody up there to pick it. We have to have someone to load it. We have to haul to buy it. it. So, yeah, but you're doing all the other stuff. So, but I don't know. Um, I haven't estimated. You know how far down that is, how wide, how deep. I, I have I haven't looked at that to figure out how much material we would need. But you could probably line that whole bank for like a quarter million. All the river bank? Yeah. What about the other side? With the material of the quarry. Yeah, and what about the other side? The up from up the bank. But the slide side. Yeah, I mean, there's a little trickier because you're going to have to cut some of the bank back mm -hmm. and lay and some stone in there. And, and it's pretty wet right now. So, you know, you probably get into another 100, 100 and a half, probably like 400,000 for all that. Yeah. But these guys, I mean, not to say this isn't the wrong approach, just they're, it's going to be very pricey. And which we knew. I mean, there was no doubt, but obviously. And, it, and the one we did in Cavendish took 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. To do. Yeah. And it was I asked smaller. him. He said they so could it takes, start. It takes a while. You know that they could start right away, but mm -hmm. obviously I don't know what the price is. My guess yeah. is it's, you know, I mean we're building a bridge to one right. house for 1.1 million. I mean, you know, a million just doesn't get you what he used to apparently. Yeah. So I'm sure it's going to be very pricey, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, when you look at if we're going to continue, so now we've got two good floods in four years. So 
Okay, so say we spend a half mil to get that because we haven't even engineered it, in which we would have to engineer the slope at least. We'd have to engineer a little bit on both slopes, I would say. <clears throat> so say we've got a half million into this mm. section of not even a mile of road. What? So we do that now, and then what's going to happen in four years when you know you have more water and that stone does? How many times are we going to do that? Where? So I don't know. I mean, I'm anxious to yeah. see what his number is. Rochester did a job a couple of years ago on their side of the mountain. Remember on the back side of the 19 flood? They, yeah, they did. They they had a similar project that. Yeah, I saw that. That was done by J. A. A. McDonald, McDonald. Maybe that it was. One, they only had one slope. Right. Well, they had upstream and downstream. Well, I thought they just did that one slope. On but the it they was had McDonald. all the guardrail and stuff there too. And they did. They lost like half the road there. Yeah. Didn't they do a? And I got to think that was like two million dollars. I'm not no doubt. It was pricey. It was, it was quite a bit. Just close, was, you know what? The right. cheapest thing to do? Close the road. Whatever is done, we right talked about yeah. That the that section is one lane. Uh, does that restore it or renew it to a two lane or at least? I'm not sure that road ever should have been two lanes, but he did say that it may in sections will garn us a little rum, not a whole bunch. But he also suggested that um, obviously there's there's only a couple culverts in place there. And in the past, uh, Morgan explained the history to me that it had always been a berm on the riverside and that the road had been sloped toward the bank and then just through the years of changes in road form and it, no, it, the berm got removed and it was kind of crowned. So it needs to be re I mean, right now it looks like there's a berm, but it's just material that slid across the road from the landslide. So um, there is a stream running on the, on the landslide. There's section. natural springs. There's like yeah. When we looked, there's like six or eight natural springs coming out of there, Born too, out of there. that you have to deal with. And, of course, too, it's there's so it's so wet, you start digging into it, and it's mm -hmm. it's going to be crazy. So we, I also, you know, who's to say? Maybe we decide, let's have them stabilize the, the bank side, and we'd riprap the river. So this doesn't have to be, you don't have to use them on both sides of the road. This well, could be a twofer. Just like we did on uh, 107. That big corner up there we lost on in Irene. Uh huh. It was like this, and now it's like the bank is like flat. <laughs> I mean, they, yeah. they they hauled in rock from from Chittenden County for uh, two months, yeah. dumped it off the rail. That's what they'll say if you want to do that. Yeah. Well, this one here you won't be able to. This will be more like a one on one and a half slope. It's going to be. Yeah, because he said he goes. We're it's not. It's going to be steep. They're not planning on. We don't have a lot of out. real estate to work with there. We don't, and he also the said the upstream end maybe you can get like two on one, but but for the bank where the slide is, he said they wouldn't change much. Basically, they can no. just come in and put it down. Clean it with up. What we have. Yeah, and stone yeah. up. But and not but again, stone again, up. Use this product again to get to Gene's point. Like right now, if you meet somebody up there, I know I met somebody the other day. But if you look at like the legal <laughs> definition of two lanes is is eleven feet lanes, right? Yep. Now, none of our dirt roads are like that. So, well, I mean, I just, you're, yeah. you're, you know, our dirt roads are 17, 18 feet wide. Mm -hmm. So, they're technically yeah. not a two-lane road anyways. But, but, but you right. want to be safe enough that you stay off of the edge. Exactly. And, and Chris and I briefly had that conversation, Dave, about that section of the road. Because, yeah, I mean, you can up. get up. the. There is a section where you can, um, like the road used to be much lower, and you can drive down the river so that you could put material in at the toe of the slope and work your way back. But either way, this is not a cheap fix. Um, and if we decided not to go this route, keep in mind we're still going to throw engineering money at it because we're going to need someone to come in and engineer both sides on whatever our fix is. So there's a chunk of change right there. I'm just convinced that it's one of those roads that with continued erosion, pick a year, you know, 40 to 80 years from now is gonna eventually just Go be done river. anyways. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's slowly making its way well, there, so. I mean, I, I was making it funny, but there's a time when you cut cut your losses and because there's access both ends. There is, and certainly if you're going um, if you know, I think it, it certainly makes your drive longer if you're on the, yeah. like you say, your our road foreman. I don't because at the end of you're going all the way to Randolph. Well, here's my question: When you get to the Bethel end, 
there's a road right there on the left, which name escapes me. Does that go back into Randolph, into Bethel? Not or is anymore. that a dead end? That, that's a ro class four holy shit road that goes ends up by the Sanders farm. Yeah, what's the name of that thing? <sighs> I can't, also, I've got on the, the road's way. It's right after when Randolph Le bon, Bethel Le Bounty Road. ends it's, and you take a left. It has a name on it. I think it's called the Bounty Road. Not anymore. No, it's called. There's a name. Is that, I, I can picture the sign. I can too. Total but I brain can't. cramp. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's I a two. On, it's a, I keep it's a to say, two, two word and it's the name of a person. I keep wanting to say Charlie Wilson, but it's, but it's not, not. But it's not but Charlie it's, Wilson. But it's a name of a person. Something. It used to be the Bounty Road. Heck, that may be. I just uh, about it. May, road. It may be used to, but yeah, now it's not. It Jeez, goes right. up to Fish Hill Road. Yeah, and I was just curious if that because I did mention that to the road foreman when I thought we might have to close it, and he was like, "Do you know what my commute to work would be?" I'm like, hmm. this Sorry. this road goes up to Fish Hill Road. Um, it's the one at the yep. end. Of, do you have the map out? I can show you. It's right. Farrington. No, it goes down closer, further. It goes closer closer west. west. It, it take it's a left right at the town the line. Yeah. It's I go down further. I don't know where you're at, so you would It's within a hundred yards of the sign that says you're town. now on Standard Standard Road. Road. Well, this is right From around Stockton. Randolph because Randolph's yep. a stock farm road, right? Yep. Yeah, so it? Farrington? Nope, it's down this way closer to us. Well Kip Farrington lives right across from that what's, turn. What's that road? Say? What? Is that a road? No, that's that's the bridge. I'm going to cross Finley Bridge. It's North Main. Uh, and you start going up Finley Bridge. I'll find it for you. This is where Finley Bridge is. Mm -hmm. yep. Right there. That's, that's where it changes to Randolph right there. It's oh, they don't show it then. It's not on here. Does it connect Farrington to Farrington? What does this one say? Back road to Bethel. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it really says on the map. Mm -hmm. Back road. Camp, that's Camp Build Drive. That's, I mean, if it's not an official road, it won't be on here. Probably, yeah, but. I don't know. It's got a nice road sign on it. So. And that does it connect over to Fish Hill? I don't know. I've never driven. Yeah, it. yeah. It's basically you know, you go the end right to the left. Yeah, you get to Fish Hill. Oh, let me see. I can't. Well, it's not an official road because it's not on the. Um. Stop it. Let's like show it on here. Believe, I can't think of the name of that road. Tyson. No. Um, Tyson? No. So, um, Are you looking, Lindley? Oh. No. <laughs> At any rate. Um, let me see if the answer is wrong. Hey, sorry to bother you, but it's like we're meeting and we're all having brain cramp. What is the name of the road that's the left after it turns to... Randolph, just past your place. Turns left. Where I turn around, like right where we have the road close sign, it's in Randolph. Tyler William Road. Where does that come out? That's, yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, thank you. It's hard to bother annoying. you. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I'm oh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Sorry to bother you, sir. I'm going to go back to my select board meeting. All right. Thanks. Bye. Tyler William Road. And he said, there's only three houses out there. I said, where does it go? He said, nowhere. He's like, it's just three houses out there. So it's Tyler William Road. So as soon as you, just as you barely get into just here from... Bethel to Randolph, it's Tyler William Road right there, because that's where I turn around to go back. It kind of goes backwards, right? It, you pull, you're going straight down to the stock farm road, but here you just, it's a, it's a, you hook a left right there, and that's Tyler William Road. He said it only Is that goes, where we turn around then? Yeah, and he said it only goes three houses, because it's uh, left. Right. To so that, that would have worked. Left, yeah. If, if you're headed towards Randolph, line, it's left. There's a road to go right. Mm -hmm. But well, you're, yeah, leave well, you could, yeah, because that would take you down by the river. Yeah. So anyway, so, going too far. so yeah. So if we were to close that road, <laughs> yeah. then you know anybody that's on this side is is going all the way to Randolph. So yeah. um, like okay. I said, I approached that with the. Well, I think at this point we just gotta see what what the geo 
stabilization. What the price is. People come back at, and then we can work on that. Yeah, I can. A guess oh, no, 80, what 80 years from now, we'll all have drones and to carry us around. We won't need more. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I will say that Morgan and I both, the enticing part was the 75 year, yeah. you know, for us that it would, because I'm like, how long does something like this last? So, but again, it could be where we have them stabilize the slope across the road and because there's no doubt more of that's going to come down. And so he did say if stuff landed on it, it'd be fine. But again, you know, it's as of like 5 or 5.30, whatever, I'd check my email. I'd have a message from them. They were working on pricing. But it's it's something that we got to think about, and it's not going to be a, a cheap fix. So, But I have an appointment tomorrow with FEMA, so at 10.30. So. Yep. But that's as far as flood repairs. So everything is out that has been awarded. We'll do contract signing. Chris is going to oversee the work. Um, so we're going to, our next step is contract signing, mandatory pre-construction meeting, um, and then Chris will, you know, start talking to people to oversee. Morgan did say if you want, he'd oversee Abbott, 12, and, and um, Fish Hill. So. Yeah, it all depends on if they all want to go at the same time or not. Exactly. So. If they all do, then it will be very busy. Yeah, yeah. so he's, um, so anyway, so we'll start that, so things will be done, and other than that, the. We are going to do a couple things outside of the bids, like um, Abbott Road. We want to add three culverts. That's not having anything to do with FEMA. We'll provide the culverts and work with the contractor. <clears throat> In this case, it's Derek. To get those installed, we've already talked to the landowner, which is Royal Rock, to see about <clears throat> getting those installed. And like Morgan said, we have a contractor there with a machine. We can go in and help them. Let's just get these things done. It's going to help us hold that road together down the road. So we are trying to do a couple of <clears throat> mitigation things outside of FEMA. Did I see that we bought all galvanized culverts this time? No. Well, that's like a hell of a pile of them up there. There was a pile. That's oh, that's for Dan McCullough. That's for that's what we um, all agreed oh, okay. on to put in the ground up there. So no, the other culverts we bought were plastic, yeah. and we've burned through all of ours, I think, except two, and and um, to to put them in the ground. So hopefully, uh, so we are trying to do a couple things outside of FEMA that we'll pay for ourselves, but it makes sense. We're there. It's needed. Let's get it done. So. So that's my update, unless you have any specific questions on the flood repairs or... I was hoping we'd get some more gravel up on our road. Well, you will. You will. All your gravel's going down down to everybody else's room. Yeah. <laughs> going to Mary's it's house. It's all at that culvert. It's, Mary's, it's going to Mary's house, yeah. yeah. So that's... So it's down. Yeah. So hopefully you will see a flurry of activity soon. Neighborhood. It's September, so we better be flurrying. Yeah, yeah, they have till November 17th, so yeah, we're everybody's. I know. Well, I think in 2019 to we started in July. I think it was late. It was July. Yeah. July and August. I think we did it all July, August, a little bit of September that yeah. year. So yeah, we're going to be so, in for sure in October. And some of these projects. But that was pretty much the same contractor yeah. had gotten almost all of them that year, so yeah. they had to kind of do one to do the other. Mm -hmm. Where this case we have three. Well, if you count North Multiple. Road, four different contractors going on, so yeah. it could get done faster. Yeah, it will. I mean, I think that... The most anybody has is two contracts. Yeah, well, Derek, because he got that grant, so he's actually got yeah. three. But that one, once he's up there, that shouldn't take more than... I don't think that'll take about a week or so to kick out. Um, is that, that is that project that's up on Morse Road towards Smith Farm, is that a FEMA project? Morse Road on... I don't know where you... Who's working it? Uh, Dylan? Yes. It's a FEMA project. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. logging and getting into the brook and all kinds of stuff up there. So, um... The road is, the road is going away. So they got to rip wrap the brook up so they can keep the road. Okay. Yeah. Then that one is because there was some up there. Um, I'm trying to remember the landowner's name emailed. I emailed with him a couple times. But, um... So, yeah, anything he's working on is FEMA-related. Um, and then same thing with Dan McCullough, WB will be wrapping up Trout Brook next week and he's done. So yeah, so they should all be getting ready to be able to move on to projects. So also, um, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, maybe somebody will sub out a portion of projects too or something. So, and the town's prepared if we need to, to help somebody, um, 
get their project, we need to haul for them or haul away material or something, we can, you know, we're, we're planning to do that too to keep people on target because we need them done and out of the way. So. No, we need them done by the 17th to get paid. Yes, right. Well, I don't think there's any liquidated damages in the contract, but, you know, we'll be on them. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah. We'll be thanking Chris pretty soon. He's the one who's going to oversee all this stuff. The, um, oh, us. I didn't know. I thought you wanted this on here. Oh, yeah. I mean, we wanted to know. talk about kind of our, well, we started talking about the town manager's goals. But then I was, one positive thing, not a lot of positive things come out of these meetings at the school, but <laughs> one of them that did kind of click with me recently is, and this was at the supervisory level as they, they, um, at the, I'm on the supervisory union board, so there's, we come together and we put together um, board goals for the year. Um, now, some of that kind of runs concurrently with the superintendent's goals, you know, mm -hmm. and and with some of the vision of the, the SU, and I know it's difficult because then it gets into each individual school, but so I just got kind of thinking the same, maybe there's some similar model that we could do where, you know, at a certain point every year that we establish select board goals for the year, whatever that might be. So, yeah. it, it, and, and like at the school, ours was like, um, I think they were like six of them. And then they kind of trickle down into the superintendent's well, yeah. piece on how they fit into those goals. Well, it makes sense. Um, I mean, so I kind of was thinking, I know we've been kicking this around a little bit. Usually it's kind of, you know, up to the town manager to kind of pick s some smart goals that work for them. Mm -hmm. But then I just kind of was thinking yep. maybe it'd be better if, if we figure out a time of year where we establish our own goals. Yeah. Um, and then we back that into yeah. the town manager. Or we do goals. it together because, let's face it, I mean, in a lot of cases, you decide which rock you want pushed uphill, and then sure. I push the rock uphill. Like, for example, I know that one of, or I believe one of your goals should be you need to focus on the downtown. I've gone through all that better connection stuff. Mm -hmm. I finally called Rita at Two Rivers and said, look, I'm about ready to rip my hair out. I'm in the weeds with flood stuff. But if we only have until 2026 to do something on Main Street, we need to take all this better connection stuff and focus. And I said, but for me, and Rita agreed, we need to focus on infrastructure because we need to do from underground up in order for us to not screw up a pavement job that's, you know, if it happens in 2026. So I gave her that email so she mm -hmm. could go through it. So I would like to work on that with the select board through the winter so that we know come spring what our goals are about what we feel we do, what what grants are out there, what we can afford to do, because 2026 isn't that long for us to tackle what we need to tackle. And it's not parklets, it's underground. We know we need to do redo the municipal parking lot. We know we have a couple water, um, stormwater projects. So for me, that would be one of my goals, and, and, and that's, a, that's a we goal. So I actually like the idea of doing it together because... I can have all the goals I want, but if, if, if they're not yours, then it really right. doesn't make a difference because we're, you know, we're doing, pushing the rock. So, but that's one thing I could think of is that, and, you know, I'm not sure if you have some. And then the other thing I just wanted to add, policy. I was looking it up. The other thing that they did coincide, I mean, I know we kind of know every year when we have to do certain things, like when we start the budget or when yeah, yeah. we, you know, do the new water rates and stuff, but not everybody down the road is going to know that necessarily, right? If all of a sudden we're not here, who knows when to do things, right? right. So the other thing that the school does is um, that they just implemented was like a, they call it a budget timeline, but, you know. Like we a could, master calendar. Yeah, it's kind of like thing. a master calendar of the year. Yeah. And it doesn't get too nitty gritty. It's more of the high level stuff, like if you weren't here all of a sudden or if the yeah. board was completely different. Yeah knowing that they're still able to get everything achieved that they need to like that makes sense like water rates are done here this is down on this. on this this is when you do it. Oh, and you can put things in like you know you could put in uh, you know make, make sure we have the select board goals in by whatever make it up june of every year right when you um, yeah you know makes sense. and then you know that <laughs> budget season 
And then even on budget season, you can say, you know, whatever, to have all this done by October, but then you're starting out your each yeah. individual um, yeah. departments until yeah, no, January makes sense. or something. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, because not everybody's going to be as, as um, organized maybe yeah. going forward with knowing all those It is, and it's a lot coming into it, sure, because everybody's maybe, a little different. Maybe the, the, the select board goals are something that could, should, ought to be shared at town meeting. And you can put it in your um, some like feedback stuff. In your like report. Well, this is what we're planning as a select board. This is what we're planning to do in the next fiscal year. Yeah, put it right in this the letter that plan. you write that goes in the uh, And so, you know, we <laughs> yeah. share with the community. Yeah. This is what Absolutely. we see as important. Yeah. And they can oh. say, no, you're full of it. And yeah, right. I mean, for me, it's, you know, one of the things, and I actually had a conversation with Ryan Slack about that today. It's been like, you know, I need help getting it done. And uh, is this master road plan. And so I talked to him again today because he asked me, how much money did we spend when we redid Campbell? So I went back through the numbers, added it all up, and said this is what we, you know, what we spent. And we're figuring that it's about um, probably 150000 a mile to do a gravel road, to do ditching, stone, put in materials and that. So then we talked about, okay, now I feel that this fall would be, a winter would be a good time. And that's a project that we could embrace because as the select board, then you have this plan. So when someone calls or comes to a meeting and says, hey, when are you fixing Perm Road? You can say, uh -huh. around here, unless of course there's a flood or something, but it gives, so that's something, but of course, my brain works in a fashion that is, I think, infrastructure, planning. You know, I'm not, we gotta update this policy or whatever. I, I'm more like nuts and bolts, but that's just the way my brain works. So your goals will be your goals, but I think you need to keep in mind those sorts of things as you go along. Certainly. That's, that's what we've talked about in the past. Yeah. So it's. I, mean, I think in my end, idea of like the whole. Like putting this like maybe master yeah. master calendar together is yeah. like getting everything that's in your head yeah. down on a piece of paper so that when that's the time scary. comes that you decide to <laughs> you leave, you don't want that. Then that'll leave. No, but you know, I'm I mean, at least we have a template that we can use. Yeah, no, I agree. That makes sense. Um, to train the next person to be, yeah, you know, because um, we we don't know how it is helpful. the next person will be compared to you. So well, and be, we've been there. Um, so, but it is helpful. You're right because you, if if you haven't been in Vermont town manager there's certain things that are the same like you did some of the same things on the same town line as other towns but but yeah there's also stuff that I had no idea like there's certain insurance forms that are specific to Vermont that have to be done because of your insurance policy and it surprises me every year so I, uh, there's and you have like Rose Cowdery the things we have to sign and send in that before COVID they mailed to us and now they just expect us to remember because you have to do them online so there is a lot of stuff like that and um, maybe it's um Know, certain policies you want to look at or whatever so I think that's a good idea but um, but yeah so I just put it on there for you guys but I like the idea of joint goals it just makes the most sense because you know your goals are my goals. So how would we <laughs> how would we like to do that I mean what what do we think the goal setting process for the board I mean I, I would think that the most logical would be right at a town meeting day you know like or what if they? What if everybody comes up with three or of their own? So at least you have an idea how everybody's thinking, and then before you roll into town meeting, maybe you. Oh right, have yeah. An idea. Just because Dave's brain works different than my brain, and so he may have three totally separate thoughts than me or Denise or or Lindley, and you know. Who knows? Maybe you'd have all the same goals. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. That's just my thought. Is at least see where everybody's coming from. What do you think, Lindley? And I, I think overall it's a good idea. I think um, I was actually just thinking about sort of the timing and like what Chris was saying of sort of the example of you know maybe it's in June the board has set the goals and then it's working on them, but obviously there's some planning and thinking and discussion that has to happen and so sort of even just setting that schedule of that time frame of when is the first discussion of goals or like your point of 
if everybody's bringing three goals to the table, what is that due date? Then when is the discussion? And, you know, is it more than one discussion? Is there opportunity for um, resident input? You know, is that at town meeting? Hey, do you have something you'd like the select board to focus on? And then people mm -hmm. submit their yes. ideas. Um, and then it's distilled down and the decision is made by X date. Um, right. So it almost seems like we have to sort of figure out that calendar first and like what would be that sort of scope of what it looks like and then yeah. and then obviously this year would be a little different we'd be out of that scope but part of our thinking would be setting that calendar where do we put well what is it is a part of it i'm sorry I mean, what what a part of it might be for us doesn't it make sense in a way that you focus on your goals um, around the same time you're doing the budget because if you come up with this super awesome goal um, in March, well, we don't have the money for that <laughs> because we didn't have the goal in mind before we started the budget. I don't know, it's just something to think about. Should The goal should be set before we're thinking about the budget because it informs then how you approach or whoever approaches setting the budget, right? So we need to know- Well, the yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because if you come up with some awesome goal in February, or you know, that's great, but it means I can't fund it for two years, you know. So I, you know what I mean. So maybe you have to think about the timing, and and it doesn't have to happen tonight. That's just. And I guess I'm kind of looking at it as, like, know. leave the town manager's performance review separate. You know, that's a personal thing between sure. the board and the town manager. Right. But then have a combination of. We'll call it the select board goals, and obviously our goals are your goals. Their goals are my goals. <laughs> you know, but they're kind of separate from this performance. But yeah, this sure. would be something that we could lay out to the public, so that they understand this is what we are. <laughs> Here's our goals. Here's why we're adding to the it, budget X number of dollars. <laughs> you know, but I think, but I think it also it it if we put that goal out there, or those list of goals yearly to the public. There's transparency and there's there's the ability for the public to hold us accountable for doing what we said we wanted to do, right? I mean, sure. obviously you help us with those goals because sure. you know we come up with That's all cool job. ideas. Know. You know, you got to execute, but exactly. That's but you know, and then there's something that we can put out there. You know, whatever you put it on the website or whatever that here are the select board goals for 2024. Yeah. Um, and maybe up and through the budget cycle, maybe we could put those goals together, like Lindley was saying during the budget cycle, and we could hear some input, not just numbers, but maybe people could come and say, "When all those people hey, come to our budget discussion, we want meetings. you to do this," you know, and they all come out, you know, yeah, exactly. And then we could then we could agree upon it upon it at budget time, just like we would, and then yeah. we could put it out there and say, "Here are our goals for the year." And, yeah. And then I'm, people can follow up with us to see if we're I mean, doing I, what we say we're going to. I do. like the idea of after town meeting. But after town meeting means I can't fund it, you know, unless it, chances are, you well, know. Well, after town meeting might not be able to fund it. Yes. <laughs> Another point. Depends if they approve Touché. it Touche. <laughs> but I can't, yeah. if it was a great idea yeah. and the money's not there and I can't find a grant for it, then you don't right. want that to be out there as a goal that you haven't achieved mm -hmm. when you could have if you had money. <laughs> so... You know, at least that's my thinking. But again, like I said, I have a this way my brain works. So, I don't. Do you want me to just put this on so you can have a discussion about timeline yeah. again, or what do you want to? I mean, what do we think about as a board? Does it sound more like what Lindley was saying that this is something that we should add to our budget conversation? Of as we're thinking about numbers, we're thinking about what what is it that we want to do with that money, right? Not just the normal stuff, but it's going to be different. Hundred thousand dollars, and some of the goals are going to be two point five million dollars. Yes, you're right. So, uh, even if we have that great idea, but it's two point five million, it's not going to happen. You're not going to throw that into the budget, right? In one shot. No, what you're going to throw in is a match, or chances are, if it's two point five million, then it needs a study. <laughs> so maybe what you're funding is. Yes, you have a $2.5 million goal, but um, and, and that's still your goal, but for this year, the portion of the goal you hope to achieve is study. to get a planning grant or a study yeah. or something to secure funding for the 
study or the preliminary engineering or something. But you're right, yeah, we're not throwing that in the budget. Or, um, or it could be, you know, whatever, a, a piece of the, the new town garage or, you know, right, whatever yeah, that sure. is so that yeah. we can well, kind of hold ourselves accountable. Let's take a look at the top plan and see what it is, what is there that we haven't been paying much attention to. Right. That is already part of our... Yeah. Uh, the town plan update starts in September, so we already contracted with Two Rivers, so we start that process in, in September as our but first meeting. But yeah, but, but that's, that's a good a, point. That's a, or that may be how you, one of you gets your goals. We have long term goals you do. already stated. Yep, you absolutely do. That we might want to say, okay, for this coming year, we're going to focus on XYZ. Yeah. I also think it's, yeah, you can't have, you know, 15 goals either, so. But, right. No. I, so, but no, I, I think Dave's I, I like Dave's idea is right too about the money. So. So we but anyways, can, I just put it. So on. it sounds like from what I'm hearing is when we tackle when we get into October and we start talking budgetary type things, we'll start thinking about goals to match those. So it's something okay. you can think about at night when you can't sleep. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> okay. Anything left on your report, or did we exhaust it all? Um, I don't remember. Oh, so we did receive a grant for five thousand dollars for the Vermont Community Foundation. Um, it basically a pass through. It the check came in and the check went out to the Bethel Food Shelf, and they were a tremendous help during the flood. So um, Cindy wow. came and picked that money up. Uh, phase two of the skate park has started. Um, they were hoping to pour concrete today or Tuesday. So I, I don't. I haven't been over. So I'm not. I don't think they've actually started yet. <laughs> I was over there Saturday. They're, they're not pouring concrete. Okay. They, they, still they haven't even dug anything in the ground yet. Oh, okay. Well, There's like a little go. little excavator had done a little bit. That's it. Oh, all right. So I did speak to um, Kyle Cartwright. He's the one overseeing that. Yeah. So he emailed me to, go to double, you know, yeah. check on what his budget was and this and that. Mm -hmm. So I um, also talked to you about Oscar. He wanted to let you know that on the ten town website, on the console page, there's a police blotter. So if you had a case number, like the stuff he sent you, you could enter it. I explained to him that nobody had the time for that, so that he wanted a little more detail. He's on vacation this week, so. Gotcha. And then I have my, it's the PDMG FEMA meeting tomorrow at 10.30, so. So um, when are they actually okay. starting the, the phase two water? They are piece? starting on um, middle of September. They are going to do Highland, yeah. Crystal Drive, Graham. I don't know which one they're going to start on because they can get all of the Crystal Drive, um, mm -hmm. you know, pipe in the ground before the pump station is built. So that's what they're, you know, going to do. That's what their focus is. Mm -hmm. I have been dealing with or. Which is probably fine because if they would have done, it's fine. If they would have done Sand Hill this year. It would have been a mess. It would have been time. a mess. So it's probably and especially a now that we're hauling people, we're having people. Yeah. Like Jeff Townsend is going to stage some of his material at the town garage. It was, it's just, might as well just yeah. finish beating what's left. And I did talk to Chris Bump because I don't have the bandwidth to deal with right now that temporary bridge on Peavine and. He's just like, look, we can give you a grant extension and, and anything. It's mm -hmm. going to hold up for whatever we put over it for traffic. And he said he'd give me a structures grant um, okay. extension, but I need the H&H &H study, too, from the culvert and bore it. But I, I don't know. I, and I'm just like, are we – part of me wants to go back mm -hmm. to a box culvert because we could just dig that thing down That'd and be easy. we could drop it in, put it in, because if we do the bridge, then i got to tear up – Peavine in both directions to get the height. To, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I can't get my brain around that right now. I think now. a little, you know, six by six culvert would be ideal. Well, I mean, I don't know what the hydraulic piece is I'll have there, to, but I do, but I can't remember it now. But we I do don't have, have a lot of room study. to dig down there. No, if you dig it's, down, it's never going to make its way out past the well, fields. Well, and then he said to me the other day, he's like, "Well, what about a maybe bridge?" I'm like. Ugh. Uh, like, I don't think right. the bridge is a long-term solution. I think there. my head's going to blow it. I said, we need to wait, and, and so I'm going to wait, see what that H&H &H study is, and then how it affects that, because I can kick mm -hmm. that one back to the state and say, now what? Right? Yeah, we talk. Now drop it in and go. Right. Well, that's it, and, and Parent Construction, who I know Tim Parent, they were doing a project out on, I don't know, 125 maybe, and they had that thing dialed in, and were in and out. And The problem we have there is. I don't know.
to hydrologically connect uh-huh. Sand Hill. Yeah. It, it's it's the elevation is too flat from the bottom of Sand Hill all the way out through the field to the river. So in order to get that so you culvert in, you'd have to drop it down because well, then you're going to need so much. Engineer the size. Yeah. yeah so you it's know, you. You got ten gallons of water needs a four inch pipe. Yeah. When it can go down, but it, now it's going to go flat. Now you need a eighteen inch pipe to carry the uh, ten gallons of water because it's going to move very slowly. Exactly. When it hits. Well, and the thing is, then you'd have to basically ditch out all the way to the end of the yeah. farmer's. Which field. we can't, but he can. Because it's and he's, he's it's all backed up with be, material. Yeah. So I don't if know if you go down any farther. Well, that's what I've talked the about. The bridge yeah. keeps you up a little this bit. This is what's going on with, with, with this. Yeah. You, you don't have the outlet taken care of. Yeah. yeah. The outlet's not working. And, and we can't go out any. We can't well, the go thing out is, we can't the go out past the right away. But the farmer kind of. can, and he has, and he can yeah. go out. But now, you know, we had the H&H &H study done for, the, for that bridge, but now it looks totally different. So... I don't know. I, I talked to Chris Bump the other day and just said, look, you know what? It's I a can't. challenging piece of It is. I just said I can't deal with it right now. I just, I need to. Yeah. I, There's a reason why it's out. never been really touched. It's, <laughs> well, I mean, everybody I have to just kind of like, okay. But you know what? There. I think that, um, God bless him, I think Gary Slack had the best idea, frankly. That bridge was on skids. He yarned it out either mm. once a year, every couple of years. Cleaned and he, it out. He cleaned it all out, put yeah. it back in. You know what? It's, we found out now, but. Yeah. It, it was a good move. So, um, I don't know. There's Honestly, I just don't have the bandwidth to mull it over. And pretty much what I told Chris Bump. But he said he'd give me an extension. So, I just, I don't know. And maybe I'll feel better about it. I I said, this, this is not big enough. No. What's I, there is not. Oh, big no, enough. because what's there is as big as what we had before. And, it's and I didn't a, have to use any physics or any fancy yeah. <laughs> no. thing behind my name. It just... That's My just 50 years of being here says that ain't yeah because that's just the temporary that we're renting for fifteen dollars a month from the state of Vermont so I don't know you're gonna do you're gonna do the culvert above also right the culvert above is FEMA that bridge but that's or that being upgraded is, yes well to what I don't know yet that's the H and H study I'm waiting on so what I'm hoping to do is once I get that then I can then I'll send it back to the state with the H&H &H he did on the bridge prior and see what sort of miracles he's going to make happen for me. Maybe he'll just build this, Therese, and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Um, so I don't know yet. And uh, frankly, I, I just, I don't know. I, I can't sort it out, but I will eventually. But yeah, that's it for the town manager's report. Select board meeting minutes from the 14th. Anybody see anything that needs to be changed? If not, just need a motion to approve them. There was a quick uh, item down. It was just a misspelling. All right. Oh, Leonard's name is spelled wrong, Julie said. She's right. There's no R in there. Was that it? No. I find it. I'm disappointed Paul would have found it. <laughs> He's not on tonight. Mm. All right, he said he was going to be. Yeah. You didn't put a Sharpie on your screen? I did, and now I started to tell my mom. I usually flag that thing. I'm reading it. Oh, it's um, under Steve Huron. Uh, the second has name is Steve Huron. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Nice. All right. <clears throat> nice. We nice job, Paul. <laughs> yeah, so we have two. Paul would be proud. We'll fix two things then. Two name spellings. Two name spelling corrections. Okay, anything else? If not, just need a motion to approve them. So, so move. move. So we get move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nice. All right. And there was some other communications that were in there. Um, so I need a little help. In my brain okay. right now. I got a call from our favorite person down the road here. 
wanted me to come and look at the road. That she got this letter today, uh -huh. and she's upset about the fact that we aren't doing anything. Right, and there's nothing. That's it. The, the well, that's that's why I'm trying to. Yeah, I, got I, should, I should respond, but I want to respond courteously. Of course. Yeah, of and, course you do. But it, basically, no. Yeah, and and um, I actually she she called today, and today it was just a zoo. Um, I had to do payroll, and um, it just was a crazy day. So I didn't get a chance to. There call must be her an back. appeal process, right? No. No, nope. in that made, case, there isn't. No, they they would have to take us to court. Um, okay. So I think that just reaching out while you understand that she's not happy with the decision, it is the decision that the select board made in conjunction with advice on their attorney. And mm -hmm. and I'm sorry that you're upset that you didn't get what you want, but this is where we're at. And um, that that'll be my just my conversation with her when I give her a call tomorrow. Okay, thank you. You know, I mean, I always feel bad get what they want but we, we did what we said we would do which was we would seek advice of counsel and we did uh, and then kind of going through the budget status report. oh yeah I'm sorry this was July I don't remember if I gave it to you guys or not I couldn't tell in a back packet so I okay. apologize if I didn't give it to you so based um, off of July I don't, I'm sorry I'm just going to assume that um, so public works, I mean, typically in this time of year, public works budget runs under, mm -hmm. usually it runs over in the winter time. Yep. So I'm assuming that the extra <clears throat> that we're over right now is probably FEMA and probably, do you, do you have any idea of what, um, two of eight, do you have any idea what the, um, so like right now, July would be 8%, right? So. Oh, okay. I think it says 8.41. It was it kind does of blurry, say 8.41. Which usually yeah, would so be some like of this six is, or seven yes, at this point. This is FEMA. So do, you, some do you have any idea FEMA, what, what kind of I, dollar figure we're talking about? I don't from? yet because no? I okay. just started working on, you have to do individual labor sheets by person, by day, by where they are. And I just started those. So what I will do when I come up with a number mm -hmm. base, and I had to do a... Um, you with the details we have to do a benefit calculation once i get those numbers set from fema then i'll make a journal entry to move this out of here into fund 89 which is the fema fund okay that way we know I just what we're going to get back for money what we need to pay our 12.5 percent eraf mm -hmm. on but at this point i have not i'm just assuming there's there. probably a fair it's, amount of it yeah, that's there FEMA is, related. Okay. I, I would assume so because since the flood happened on the 10th and I, that would have been right around our first payroll in July yeah. so yeah okay yeah and then there was um, there was some stuff that was allocated to the cruiser yep. $1,500 the cruiser you know what that was yes I, I think if that's the one I think it is um, it's then, basically the only thing oh let me see where he's at Wait, pretty right. much the only cost that's hit that yeah let me just, is this cruiser 1500 bucks so it must be some Oh. Maintenance of the cruiser. Or yeah. Something? Yep. Yeah. It tires was. Tires or something. Yep. He had. It was at the. Um. It was at J J Auto. I can't remember if yeah. he got tires or. Yeah. I remember when I did stuff. the uh, payables one time. There was something. Yeah. Yeah. Had some work. I think it was tires, but he did have some work done up there. Some good tires. I'd have to look at. It can't. Oh, they're be. scary. I just. I don't I know. The tires in my truck Breaks for this year. Yeah. They're Maybe that was it. Yeah. Brakes and something. Brakes I don't remember else. what else he had done. I'd have to. When you flip through the payables, okay. we would have had to look. I don't remember. Yeah. And it could be more than one invoice too. Okay. Not but I can one. look. I don't know off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, because he did have it up there. Then I I kind of had a similar. What's in here? It wasn't here? a leaf spring. Yeah. <laughs> What's in here? All right. I'll... I had a similar question for the municipal office stuff because we're over there. So I didn't know if Same thing. some of that is FEMA yep, or absolutely. some of that payable stuff will be FEMA related. Well, okay. the payroll stuff would be FEMA. And then it, no, it's, again, it's small, might, um, but we're already, we're already over 50% of our posted mailing. So is that something yep. we just because need to update or is it? We buy. Um, buy ahead? We, we buy ahead, yeah, when we do, like, tax bills and envelopes and stuff like that. Okay. So we bought, um, so that, okay, I believe gotcha. that's what that is. We'll have to double check, but I'll make a note. Check, question mark. Um, but we do for tax bills and things. Uh, I think that was it. Also, too, I'll have to make sure that when they're buying that they're allocating to water and sewer for their bills. But 
we'll see what it is. Make sure it's not a bill that should have been paid last year mm -hmm. in this fiscal year. And do we do we have any idea what we're thinking for legal? I know we don't have a lot of the bills that hit that, but we've been using them quite a bit lately. Yeah, I don't know. I just coded a couple, so okay. I don't know. We'll see what the end of August looks like. And then um, some of that, well, no, the legal bills for the water department go to the, go there. So okay. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't have an idea. <laughs> I feel like I talked to him as much as anybody else. Well, I just was... That used Haven't to be. Seen that bill yet. It used to be like a five thousand <laughs> yeah. dollar budget item <laughs> that then went to about sixty thousand one year yeah. after we had to fight off some suits. So yeah. then it became a like, forty thousand dollar item we had in the budget for a while. And it, and it that has we slowly have ticked down. Ticked down. down. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. No, that's true. And the other things we've been dealing with have been via insurance. So VLCT has been paying for that. So okay. this the attorney we've been has been really bond stuff. But you will see charges come because um, we'll be doing another tax sale. So you'll no. see some legal as we put stuff up for tax sale. So, so that'll. I it was a long time ago in the meeting, but the letter that we approved for Chris to sign for EWP. The there's a, the last sentence in the first paragraph. Okay, it's a template. I just printed I it off that they sent me. It needs to be edited. Okay. They, I printed the guy sent it to me, Michael Point. The last, what was that? Last Please sentence. Please contact them for any additional information that you might No, need. last sentence, first paragraph. Eroding steam banks needs to be armored due to protect buildings, roads, oh, utilities. You're right. Eroding stream banks need, need singular, to be, to be armored. armored. Yep. Elect, re, remove the word do. Yep. Go see. Okay. Should have had you edit theirs. <laughs> I'm, I'm they sent it out to everybody, so we all got the same template, so they're all going to get it back with the same grammatical errors. <laughs> well, and anyway, yeah. I just yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't write it. Well, if you I need to change it, just yeah, like I'll let you come in and sign it. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Editorial. That's right. All right. Do we have anything else? Um, next meeting on what the first meeting in September is I would, probably won't be present at all I'm going to be driving back from Maine and I don't think I'll have service if I do I'll try to call in and if I'm back in town in time I'll be there but I sort of doubt I will be I'm, I'm sorry okay. Lindley you're breaking up we didn't hear any of that but we'll see you at the next meeting okay <laughs> yeah all right Lindley out yeah out at next meeting okay I'm writing it down, Lindley, so that when we all sit here in two weeks and say, where'd she say she was? I remember today. Yeah, I remember today. Yeah, we'll be calling you. Where did you say you were? Okay, anything else? We just, if not, just need a motion to adjourn. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. Who's second? Uh, good night, everyone. Thanks, Lindley. Take care. Lindley.